Welcome to another learning session. Today, we're going to cover three ways to bring in live clocks and timers into Wirecast. This is something that a lot of you may have been curious about. There's more than one way to skin a cat, so to speak, in this topic. Um, and I'm going to show you real quick the three ways that you can bring in these timers. Now, uh, let's say you are a bit uh, on a bit of a low budget, right? You don't want to work with software at the moment. You just pretty much want to keep it as simple as you can. Well, the simplest way to bring a clock or a scoreboard into Wirecast or any live streaming software for that matter is to point a camera at the clock. Now, you do need two cameras. You need one to cover your, your um, you know, the play action or the sport itself, but then you need a second camera that you can just point at the scoreboard itself. And of course, you need a pretty good angle on that scoreboard, but once you get a good shot, it works pretty well. Um, let me show you how that works. Um, so I'm going to launch Wirecast here, and we are going to just open a new project here. And I have a camera here. Let's bring this in. Uh, and actually already plugged in. So I'm just going to bring in this device and there it is. And so I pointed it at this clock over here. This is not a scoreboard clock, but you'll have to use your imagination. I'm just going to set the zoom in a little bit, make sure I can adjust it. Now, of course, the distance from the clock is important <laughs> is because, uh, Things will get a little shaky the more you zoom in, like the smallest shakes you can see will will um, affect the picture much more drastically. Um, but once you get a pretty good tight shot on it, it's then totally possible to crop this down in Wirecast and make it appear quite natural almost within um, the within the frame itself. So you can head over to your properties tab here and just go down to the crop section and we're just going to crop off the top a little bit the right and the left and the bottom so right there and then i'm going to just make sure the right is good okay so uh it's up to you how much you want you know it really depends on how you set up your own camera and so forth um, i can actually go right into the numbers you got to keep in mind that if we had a double digit here you know um time like 10 or 11 then we might need to, a different crop here but uh, this is pretty good and you can go again make sure you know that if another digit's going to appear in your clock that you've made space for that in your crop uh, once you've done that you can scale it and by the time you get down there, it doesn't look bad at all. It looks almost like a normal clock, right? And if you were to bring in, say, a scoreboard here, I'm going to jump in and make a scoreboard on a lower layer. Wirecast has scoreboards built in. They don't have timers or clocks built into them yet. Um, so you need to sort of provide your own. Uh, and there's a number of ones you can choose from in terms of the look. Uh, so sort of again up to you how you decide but if you for example want to do you know start with this guy and then you add say uh, a top or a bottom field right hit okay we add that scoreboard in and I'm gonna go to make this a little larger and you can pretty much drag you know the clock right in there uh, so it's one way to do it and it looks almost fully produced right so um, pretty easy way to do that if you want to replace stuff if you need to edit things on your scoreboard say in the field I'm gonna go back here hold on um, I'm gonna go to field one you would just take out the text there so that's totally normal. And arrange the cropped shot however you need to to make it fit within the context of the um, the other the scoreboard. And there you go. That is a quick way to bring in a natural shot. Now, if you want to set it up, you don't necessarily have to do the field. You can turn off. There's, you know, it's up to you stylistically where and how you put it. You could add shapes or other things behind it. Um, totally 
your call and how you arrange it and what the style of it is. Um, in my case, I might want to, um, you know, have the clock here, right? Make it larger and put it actually on the scoreboard itself uh, rather than try to put it in that upper field there. I might just want the clock as part of the scoreboard. Um, and then right next to the scores. So you arrange it however you like. You can design these types of backdrops and graphics in Photoshop and then just overlay, you know, already build in a spot for the clock. You know, if you've um, done it before, maybe you could go to the venue ahead of time, take a picture of the scoreboard and then work with a still image and sort of arrange your scoreboard layout for what you want to do based on the idea that um, you've already know what the clock looks like and how much you'll crop it down and how much you'll you'll scale it down to fit it within your your scoreboard looks. So it's a good thing to work out ahead of time. But if you you know down and dirty on the fly, you can see it looks awesome. Now notice this: if I'm hitting the table, it's shaking the clock, and people start to notice like, whoa, that's it's shaking around there. Like that three's you know 18's moving around. That's you know when you zoom really far into a, um, a scoreboard or a clock from a great distance, you'll just get that. So people walking by the camera, or if you're in the uh, stadium, you know, sitting down, all that can shake the camera. And those are some of the downsides, obviously. Uh, and of course, the other downside is that you have to devote a whole camera, which you would probably much rather use for close-ups on the action and you know replay cam and stuff like that. Okay, so that's the first way. Set a physical camera and bring it in. Here's the next way you can bring in a scoreboard. So we're going to add, um, well, actually, let me start by opening website. So there are two things here. I'm actually going to show you these. We're going to go um, just head over to the Apple website first here. So the first one is if you, have, if you actually want a timer, you can go to timeme.com. This is a free uh, website that allows you to create timers and graphics. Uh, and it's not too tricky. You can choose the type of, um, you know, whether you want alarm clocks or chess clocks or stopwatches or countdown timers and so forth. Most sports frequently use a countdown timer. So you might want to use the countdown timer. What's neat about this, if you click the countdown timer page, you can customize exactly what everything looks like so you can choose you know whether or not there's a loop uh, you can choose whether there's an alarm or not and as far as the timer display you can choose the number of places that you have so for example if you you know don't want to say zero five five you just want to say five zero zero or you know and so forth uh, how many places if you want to go out to a much longer time you can do that so all of that is totally under your control which is cool um, another neat thing you can choose is whether or not to bold the clock or not uh, and then you can choose the color of the text and the color of the background so we could make the text blue uh, we can make it sea green what we can't do to my knowledge is make it white uh, as far as I know there you can even choose the font which is quite cool um, and in this case I'm actually going to make the make that white now um, or sorry black and then you can choose the background. So you can choose to do white background. You can choose to do a black background. You can choose to do a chroma key background. Uh, now, what do you do next? Well, if you're already guessing, you're going to head into Wirecast and create a screen capture. So we're going to go down here. We're going to select screen capture as a source. We'll jump up here and choose to target a window. And in this case, we'll select Safari, and there it is. The countdown timer window appears. Hit OK, and boom, it's now come in with our green screen and green background. It's all in. We probably don't want to show the cursor. We don't need that, and we don't need to capture audio unless there was a timer that we wanted to capture. Um, and again, here you go. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to crop this down. So just go to the crop tab. We're gonna crop the bottom up to there. We'll crop the top. And I'm even crop the right and the left a little bit. Okay, so we've got the general crop factor there. Uh, next, I'm going to actually chroma key it out, but for a second, let me scale it down first. And put it again on my 
clock here. Now, this is where it gets kind of cool. That chroma key background fits right into Wirecast. You can now head over, select the source, which is, you know, our clock there, our screen capture clock. And then I'm going to head over and just check the chroma key box and it should just disappear the green. Boom. Now it looks like that clock is just on the scoreboard itself. And we can head over and control the clock just by clicking the start timer, right? So we can start and that will start the countdown. And then you can pause it, do that. So this is a really simple way to have a clock timer uh, with very little work, just a screen capture and a chroma key um, and some fancy crop work. Uh, again, it'd be nice to be able to do white text. I'm not quite sure why the white is not on this list. Um, that may be a problem because obviously you, you, you know, you don't necessarily want green or blue or red or navy green. Uh, so it surprises me that white isn't just an option here. Um, but maybe I'm missing something. Anyway, so that chroma key looks great. Now, obviously, if I was to drag that off, the letters all but or the numbers all but disappear but looks great on my clock there uh, obviously this will not be tied to the game you will need to control this yourself and so you know if you miss if you forget you may need to reset it and go back a little um, I'm not sure there's an easy way to quickly edit the time but you know you for, for example if if you say the play action stopped the game clock stopped at 4 uh 30 right or 4 let's say 4 18 um then you would need to just come in here and reset this to 4 18 uh and then hit set sorry hold on hit the reset and then hit the start when it's time to go and then pause. So you just kind of need to be aware of this. Uh, you may want somebody on a, you know, just watching the clock. It's hard to jump back and forth, be a clock op operator and, and not. So maybe having two screens where you have a, a secondary screen where you can watch the timer, just kind of run over and click that. Um, and I haven't tested the clock um, dot time, sorry, timeme.com with, with space bar and keyboard. So, you know, keyboard shortcuts. So as far as I can tell, those don't, you can't just activate it with quick sh keyboard shortcuts. So again, another bit of a, um, oop, and then you see I'm doing a scroll there and it's messing up um, as I scroll through the screen capture crop is, is changing. So just be aware of that as well. If you accidentally scroll, it might mess up your screen capture um, with the crop. Okay, so a couple things to be aware of there as you do a screen capture. There is another really cool uh, tab, and I'm going to another cool um, clock website, and that is um, clocktab.com. And this is if you don't necessarily want a timer, you want to have an actual clock right? Uh, and what's cool about this, this site is extremely well designed, in my opinion. Uh, you, uh, it's very slick, very straightforward. You can change whether you want seconds, times, the date, if you don't want the date, if you don't want um, the AM, PM, and so forth, you can have that. Uh, you can change the background look. They have several, like, nice types of backgrounds. You can do an ocean clock. You can do river valley. Keep in mind, again, that you will be uh, just capturing this through Wirecast, through a screen capture. So you may just want a custom, and you may want um, a green background. And you can just head up here and type green. If you know uh, web colors or CSS type colors, you can type those in. So for example, if you really like this really bright chroma green, almost a, a more yellow type green, then uh, you may need to type in the actual color values of that. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, a place you can find those, perhaps real quickly, let's see, is if you head to solid color, I think there's a way. Yeah, we should have color values here. So if you want that kind of bright green. So I could copy that. Oh, so it's hashtag 38FF00. Let's try that. Hashtag 
FF00. There we go. So it will take those types of inputs. So if you want that brighter green, you can do that. So let's uh, just jump in. We will cancel that. Do another screen capture here. Uh, and it looks like it's already doing it. It's just grabbing it from the same tab. So if I scroll, it looks like it won't let me quite scroll here. Uh, I can also change the font uh, type. So if you don't like, or maybe you can't. Oh, one cool thing is just clicking on it will zoom it to the full size of your whole uh, video. So I think it's a really slick way they've designed this. I think it's um, very um, intuitive, very nicely designed. Uh, it doesn't look like it's going to let me set the clock, um, the font at the moment. So let's just readjust our crop as if that was, let's take the bottom down a little bit. There it is. Actually, we can just click and go big with it and zoom, take the tab all the way. There it is. And just scale it down just a tad. And there you go. So now you have the actual time of day uh, and you can even put the date and so forth. So this is a great way to, to timestamp your videos uh, and so forth. So um, very slick, easy way to bring in an actual clock. So those are the ways you can do it with physical capture from a scoreboard or pointing a camera at a clock. Uh, I've seen on Adult Swim uh, live streams, they just actually point a camera at their wall clock in their office. So it's actually a physical like, you know, 12 hour, you know, analog clock. Uh, you can point it at the digital clock or a clock on a scoreboard um, with a camera. Certainly valid way to do that. Keep a track on time and bring that in. Uh, you can do screen captures with websites like timeme com and clocktab.com which are great all right guys that's the show for today thanks so much for watching and those are the ways that you can bring clocks and timers into wirecast thanks for watching